Hallelujah. Our God. Yeah, our great. I'll pray, I'll pray. I'll pray. I'll pray, I'll pray. We worship. We worship. Lord. Hallelujah. How great is our God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I will now call upon Miss Chloe Rezant, who will do the offerings, which is very much part of our worship. So I will now hand over to Miss Rezant. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, beloved. Good evening. Seems there's only a few of us here. So good evening. Allow me to greet our NOB, Pastor Kumalo, Pastor Barent, Dr. Weideman, um, Pastor Rudy, and um, all protocol observed for all our other leaders, our NLF members, the invited guests, our head of departments, pastors, and members of the AFM. Um, so as pastors already said, my name is Chloe Rezant, and I have been afforded the opportunity to do the part that everybody doesn't like so much, the offering. We don't like to talk about money. So if you would bear with me, I won't take much of your time. I would like us to turn quickly to Proverbs 13, verse 22. And it reads as follows. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children, but the sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. So some of you are perhaps wondering, so how does this tie in with offering? So I want to speak to you about an earthly possession. So as um, young people now, we are taught about investments and the importance of investing, especially for the day of tomorrow. We do not know what tomorrow has in store. And so you are always taught to invest. And some people that don't invest are fortunate enough to get inheritances and then invest it. So in terms of earthly inheritances, perhaps it's a house, a car, um, a large amount of money that you receive. And so um, we know some people are upset when they don't receive inheritances. But <laughs> I'm here to tell you something great. When you invest as a Christian, when we invest our tithes and our offering, we are not going to receive um, a large amount of money at the end of our investment, right? So by definition, investment is the action or process of investing money for profit. So the idea is we all invest hoping that one day we will still be alive to reach the profit. Yes or no? Yes? Okay. Okay. But with our tithes and our offering, we do something great. And this is something which my parents instilled in me, is that you make an investment into yourself. You are preparing yourself for God's kingdom. You are allowing God to bless you, to pour out his favor on you, because you are investing into his kingdom so that his glory can continue, so that his kingdom can grow, so that many of us sitting here, can actually go out and become good stewards and disciples and do what we are supposed to do according to Matthew 28. And so today, speaking on our tithes and our offering, I want to urge you, what is your investment going to be today? We live in a society where when we go out to eat, we don't like to tip people. Right? If you eat at the restaurant, you just pay your bill. Now the restaurants have become, have become clever. They add it to your bowl, right? The tip. But yet some of us are tipping God. We are not bringing our full tithe and our full offering when it comes to God. So today, as you are digging into your pockets, 
or your bags can be set aside that five rand and the ten rand. Um, Pastor Rudy, what do you want? Not less than a hundred. Not less than a hundred. The, the treasurer has spoken, not less than a hundred. So let's be earnest because at the end of the day, we are investing in ourselves. You are investing in your future generations. The verse that I read says, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his family. So you might not see it now, but in a couple of years, in 50 years' time, your children and your children's children will reap those benefits. And so I want to leave you with that this evening. So the way that we will be doing the, the um, offering is we have ushers stationed at each section. You do not have to move or stand up anywhere. They will pass along the bags and you will place your offering in um, the bags. So I know I said we won't be moving, but can I please ask us all to stand as we just do a collective prayer, and then we will ask the worship team to do a song for the offering. Thank you. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Lord. Father, there is no one like you, no one greater than you. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you have already bestowed on us, Father God. And I pray that now, as we are still going into the service, I know that you are going to bless us. I know that you are going to come and show your favor and your Holy Spirit is going to flow in this room over this next few days like never before, Father God. There will be a reigniting of so many people's souls during these three days, Father God. And so, Lord, I pray that as we are now going to give your offering, that you are going to bless the hands that, are, that have um, given the offering. And those that are not fortunate, that you are still going to bless them and allow them to bless you at a later stage. Going into the rest of the service, Lord, we also pray for the preacher that will be ministering to us this evening. I pray that you will come and overtake, Lord, that you will come and bless his mouth, that you will just allow him to share with us the word that you have given to him this evening, Father God. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done so far and all that you are still going to do for this great church. I pray this in and through your son's name. Amen.
Ik zeg ons ook conferentie. Ons ook conferentie. Mijn voorrecht nou om pastor Trevor Hubbard. Ik uh, toch. Uh, pastor Salbi Kamalu. Ga ik naar voren roepen wat voor ons die. is going to do the welcome of our special guest. There you go, sir. Hallelujah! You can do much better than that. Hallelujah! Better than that. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. We greet our president and Mama Margaret, our deputy president, Pastor Barrel Peterson and Pastor Don Peterson, Pastor Rudy Kutsen and his uh, beloved wife. We greet all the departmental heads and department leadership. We greet our former NOB members. Uh, Pastor Mashobo is the AFM international president and Dr. Laporta who is with us here, NLF members, pastors, uh, and their spouses, brothers and sisters, be greeted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm here to welcome our special guests that are here, uh, Pastor Derek, the senior pastor of this assembly, has welcomed us and we greet the founding pastor of this assembly, Lighthouse Christian Center, Pastor Sneiman. We are honored by these two leaders to open their doors for our church uh, not this year, but several years they've done so. And let us put our hands together for them. <laughs> and the entire pastoral team of about five pastors 
of Lighthouse Christian Center. They are here together with senior leadership and we are honored by their attendance. In our midst, we have Dr. Peter Watt, who is the chairperson, chairman of the assembly, Assemblies of God, uh, general uh, council. It is the four sections of the Assemblies of God put together is the chairperson of that body and is a senior man in the Assemblies of God. All sections put together, that is back to God and other sections, he is the chairperson. To have him here, it reminds us of significant Pentecostal connection and we are happy about that. And is here together with uh, the executive um, member, that is Pastor Theo Roman. We are honored that both of you from Assemblies of God at a senior level, you are here with us. We also have senior leaders from United Apostolic Faith Church, Professor Madiba, Pastor R. Malina, and Pastor B. Hill. Maybe they are somewhere here. Uh, if they are not uh, uh, closer, we welcome you, sirs, and uh, pastors from this great church. Be honored in Jesus' name. We will therefore give two leaders the opportunity to greet us. The first one will talk to us via a broadcast. That is the moderator of the full gospel Church of Southern Africa, uh, moderator Peterson. If, if you are ready there to broadcast it, we'll be able to see it. Greetings to our brothers and sisters of the Apostolic Faith Mission, Dr. Henry Vaderman, Pastor Peterson, Pastor Kumalo, Pastor Quirton, as the office bearers of your church, along with all the ministers and members of this great movement. We thank God for you. We thank God for your invitation extended to us to participate and be part of your conference in Cape Town. Please accept our apologies for not being able to honor this invitation. We thank God for your theme, a blaze, powerful theme. I'm reminded in Acts chapter 4 how the religious leaders of the day tried to get Peter and John into a corner and arrest them. Verse 13, at the end of verse 13, it says a powerful thing. After they interviewed them and tried to corner them into all kinds of things, these men that was the religious leaders of the day concluded something very profound. And they say, and I quote, it is clear that these men had been with Jesus. At the end of verse 14, it says, and they could do nothing to them. My prayer is that as you conclude your conference, and as everybody goes back to their various churches and communities, that the people in their communities will say of you, my brothers and sisters, that it is clear that these men and women have been with Jesus. May your hearts be set ablaze by the power of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you. We'll offer this opportunity to Dr. Peter White from Assemblies of God to come and give us a short remarks and greetings. Thank you, sir. Well, I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
and all the office bearers here. Thank you for the invitation to be here this evening. Uh, we take it as an honor. And I was looking at your signage over here, 1908, 115 years. Wonderful. We too, Assemblies of God, also but go back to 1908. 115 years. The AFM is a great church. You have done great things. <laughs> 1908 was between the end of the Boer War and the uh, uniting of South Africa, the Union of South Africa, 1910. And so that was a period of, of distress. The war had left devastated people, broken people, from all groups of society, broken, cheated, lied to, and poverty-stricken, many of them. And it was into that context that the Pentecostals came. And they were a... They were able to reach these broken people. And I think the marvel was that they came with that idea of you can be born again. You can have a new start. And the baptism of the Spirit, you will receive power. You know, what did that mean to people who had no power? No financial power, no connections, no education, no, no nothing, no jobs. But you shall receive power. And indeed, they received power. Outside of church, they were nobody. Inside of church, they were somebody. Because of the gifts of the Spirit. Because they could bless people. And so in those early days, there was that interplay between the platform and the congregation, and the whole mix was just charged with power, waves of singing in the spirit, or speaking in tongues, or prophesying, and the meeting emerged out of the congregation and the pulpit. Marvelous. And so, here again, we are sitting in a time in South Africa where there is much brokenness and bitterness and people wondering where, are, where is the next meal coming from. Folks, this is a good time for us to preach the gospel and bring people to Jesus. May God bless you. May you have a wonderful time here. Amen. Oh. Our greetings from the Assemblies of God and from Theo Roman down there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Greetings, uh, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All protocol observed. My humble task is to introduce our speaker. God still speaks. And God has to speak. The men from Emmers said, were our hearts not ablaze while he spoke to us? And uh, we trust that tonight, we are also going on a three-day journey like they came from Jerusalem on a three-day journey. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. May the Lord help us on our three-day journey that our hearts become ablaze. We are being ministered to by our general treasurer, Pastor Rudy Kurtzen. Uh, Pastor Rudy is in the first place a husband. Married to Amarantia, they have two children, so he is a father. They have four grandchildren, so he's a grandfather. He has been a pastor for many years in the AFM. He has ministered in about five assemblies. Uh, his longest tenure is in Brackpan West, uh, where he ministered from 1999. He became the leader of the East Rand region in 2008, and he led that region until he became our general treasurer in 2021. And so I invite the chief steward of our finances,
Pastor Rudy Kurtzum. The voice of God for the evening. We left Johannesburg yesterday, we had the air conditioning in the car on because it was, 30, it was 30 degrees and we ended up here getting in a car and putting on the heater. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different situation, but we're thankful that God is with us and thank you for all of you coming here. I hope that it was a, a pleasant experience to register for this conference, but also for coming to this conference and welcome to each one of you from us as the NOB this, uh, tonight to be present here. I also greet all our pastors, our NLF members, previous NOB members that are here, all protocol observed, and thank God for each one of you present here tonight. Uh, as we gather, um, we, I just want to make mention of one of my portfolios. You know, we need sometimes to just take a gap. Now, I like to preach about money, but the NOB chose certain topics and they spoke to me very earnestly before the service. And they said, if you speak about money, you'll never preach again on this platform. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very in a tight spot, you know, because I've got a natural gravity to preach about money, but I'll have to really concentrate tonight. But, so as I've got this opportunity, I just want to speak about the archives. Very exciting topic, huh? can see every one of you sitting on the edge of your seat. can't wait for the next word. Archives is the place where we store all our documents. For the last 115 years that this church exists, we've got a huge amount of documents telling the story of this church. And through God's grace, we've got wonderful talents in this church. And for our 115th commemoration of this church existence, a special book was written, and it will be revealed during this time. We not exactly know, know when it will be, but um, it is about the story of John G. Lake, and especially the first years. And it's a wonderful story, about 180 pages that has been written by our brothers and sisters that wrote this book. And we invite you, when it's revealed, that you will buy the book and that you will go and read it. It will really help you to understand where we come from. This church has got a very strong DNA. And we still exist in that DNA. We're a revivalist movement, Pentecostal movement, believing in the power of the Holy Spirit moving amongst us. Um, I know time is going, so let me get back to my message. Um, as we prayed about this conference as NOB members, we experienced in our hearts that God has revealed to us that we need to have this conference, and our topic is ablaze. It's a topic that we believe that God has told us that we must preach on tonight. And Ablaze is in a state of glowing excitement or ardent desire, burning brightly, radiant with light or emotion. That's the strongest definition of the Ablaze. And I pray that if you leave this place, you will burn brightly. That you will be radiant with light. That you will be a light with the Holy Spirit wherever we go. And that we will be people that, make it, that, 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 that will have an impact and a change in our country. We all know that we're not in a good space. But this is a wonderful opportunity that God is giving us. That we can make an impact and a change. And if these people sitting in this place go out and we, and we, and we do what God is calling us to do, we will, this country will be another place. I believe that with my whole heart. Another, one of the meanings is that, well, I pray that when you, we leave here on Saturday night, that you will be radiant with light, that you will be in a state of glowing excitement. I want to speak on something that uh, came to my mind when I thought about the topic that I'm preaching on tonight. I want to speak about social influences. Do you know what a social influencer is? It is someone who has the power to impact consumers' purchasing decisions because of their authority, knowledge, position, or relationship with their audience. Now, there are some people present here that also are social media influencers. They use their influence 
to, 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 to get people to do certain things. Now, I have did a short study on social influencers. I don't know if you know, the person that's got the most followers on Instagram is the person with the name of Cristiano Ronaldo. He's a soccer player, for those that don't know. He has 604 million followers on Instagram. And he uses this influence and all these followers to make money. Because they, they think he's a great guy, they think he's a big, he's, he's a big guy, and he's still he's, he's a looker as well, if you can see at, <laughs> on that picture. I chose one that specifically viewed, that you can see that improperly. Um, Lionel Messi is another soccer player. He's second with 484 million followers. Selena Gomez, she's an American singer, actress, and a fashion icon. She's got 427 million followers. I'm, I'm a petrol head, I must admit it tonight. And uh, I've just, look, I see Lewis Hamilton has got 31.5 million followers, and Max Verstappen has got 9.1 million followers. There are many categories where people influence what happens in different spheres of life. Business, Richard Branson has got about 5 million followers. Industry, music, fashion, writers, health, gaming. There's so many different areas where people influence other people in these areas. Now, Ursu is a company that sells water. And they realize that they could sell more water if they can get somebody with influence to influence other people to buy their water. And if you can just put that slide back there. It's, uh, it's Ronaldo saying, Ursu is much more than water. It is an inspiration to drink health and a lifestyle. Now, the image that is created here is that if you drink that water, you will have that nice hair, you will have the, the, the nice tan, and I, I suppose there's a six-pack underneath there as well. So if you want a six-pack, please buy that water. I don't think it's available in South Africa, but some people will probably take and import it through Amazon or something. So, Ursu is the talk of town. Because somebody that's got 600 million followers is telling everybody, you need to drink this. It's going to do something for you. It's unfortunate that the word influencer was captured by the world. Because it's something that Jesus taught his followers. He taught them to be influencers. Let's read the Bible, Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16. It says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine, so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This will be the text that we'll use for the next three days for our messages. And I believe that God has laid a specific message on each one of us to, as the NOV members to preach on specifically. And you will hear wonderful things to, uh, for the next three days. The text that I want to focus on is for verse 14 to B and 15. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it on under a basket, but on a lampstand gives light to all in the house. Jesus indicates here that his people, his disciples, is the light of the world. Won't you just say, I'm the light of the world? Dr. Henry will preach on that specific topic on Saturday night, so I'm not going to elaborate. I just want to start this conference, because I believe when we end it, we're also going to say it, we are the light of the world. And as we leave this place on Saturday or in the night, that we will have an influence and make a difference. I will focus on the, not our light under a basket. Many of us do not realize that one word can change somebody's life. One word can change somebody's life. We have influence by saying something. We have the Holy Spirit that speaks to us and can reveal to us what we need to say, to do, or to give. 
Uh, Sister Chloe just mentioned here something about tipping people at the restaurant. Last night, me and my wife ate at a specific restaurant, and when we finished eating, I just felt in my heart to give this lady that's, that, that, that brought the food to the table, this waitress, the same amount of money of what our food cost. And I'm not bragging about it. I said because I felt it in my spirit. And when she, she saw it, she said, this, this cannot be. I said, no, I want to bless you. I want to bless, be a blessing to you. And I could see her eyes as, you know, she had a bit of a, what's going on here? I didn't want to share the gospel at that moment in time, but I know that something was, was happening in her own life. Maybe she was praying yesterday afternoon and saying, Lord, I need some money. And through God's grace, maybe I was just listening at that moment in time. But you and me can have an impact through small little things that we do. And we can help people. and We can influence them. We can change the course of their life. You and I are influencers. Say where you are. I'm an influencer. When my light shines, people can see. When people see the light in us, it makes a difference. The way that we conduct ourselves will, will make things happen and change people's lives. Our continued testimony will show people who we are. That we love people. We've got too little love in this country. You know, if you... I, 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 I'm not a, uh, familiar with Cape Town traffic. I must be honest, I'm used to Johannesburg traffic. There I know what to do and how to stay out of trouble. But it seems that the rules here in Cape Town are slightly different. And I've ended up today somewhere where somebody was quite angry with me. I did something, I don't know what I did, but okay. It was probably not the custom here in Cape Town. But he gave me a good evil eye. I realized, Rudy, you need to be very careful here. You, you, you're a foreigner here in this place. <laughs> you don't want to get hurt here. But you know, if, I, if you see somebody that is not familiar, luckily the, the rental car that I have has got GP number plates. So I've got something to hide behind. <laughs> but but, but if, if, if you see somebody struggling, what do we do? Are we there to help? Or are we there to criticize? What are you doing? You're driving not properly. Or are we there... Sir, I see you. Are you okay? Can I bless you? You know, one of the things that frustrates a taxi driver very much is if they do something that angers you, you just stop next to them and say, God, bless him. It changes your heart. <laughs> it changes us so that we influence things in other people's hearts. That when bad things happen, we can see good things happen. When a businessman do honest business and is not prepared to pay a bribe, but to do what God tells him to do and do the right thing. Not take shortcuts, but to do the right thing. Philippians 2 verse 15b says, Believers, you are to shine as light in the world. Now the Greek word that is used here for shine as a light um, is the same word that is used for a lighthouse or a beacon that shines light. The light of a lighthouse is very strong. Uh, and if some of you live maybe close to a lighthouse, and uh, we, sometimes when we go on holiday, we stay in a place where it's fairly close to a lighthouse, you can see that light for kilometers and kilometers. This light warns ships about danger. But it can also tell where the harbor is, so that people can find the harbor. If a sailor or captain of a boat is lost, this beacon of light can save him and his ship. It influences to save the ship. You know, uh, when uh, it, it happened in the last week that I was driving on a road, and I'm very conscious of keeping the road, uh, keeping in, inside the, the speed limits. And I was driving and somebody came from the front and he was flashing his lights. And I immediately knew I need to speed up. Okay, is that what I'm supposed to do? No, you're supposed to slow down. 
because somebody is warning you there's a speed trap ahead. So I immediately saw it, but I was under the speed, so I'm okay. But there was somebody passing me at that moment going much higher than the speed. And he prayed so hard that the car's nose dive into the ground and they didn't catch him. So we need to also be that light warning people there's danger ahead. There's problems ahead. There's a speed trap ahead. You need to be very careful on how you drive, how you conduct yourself in your life. So are we that light that shines, like this beacon of light that warns people that they should be, which warns about to be careful, there's danger ahead. We can have a huge impact. We can have a huge influence through our life and can save people from certain death. That's the influence that we can have. Every one of us are surrounded by people that live in darkness, struggling to make sense of life, negative, they are depressed, they wonder what life is about. But we, as a lamp on a lampstand, can influence and make that difference. We are the light beacon showing the way to Jesus, showing the light to a safe harbor, we're a safe place where people can find new life and eternal peace. Each one of us has influenced people already in our lives. And we can think of people that influenced us as we journeyed through life. I think about my life. I remember in my grade two year, there was a specific Sunday school teacher that took an interest in me. And she really made trouble to, to speak to me and to pray with me. And to also help me to, 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 to have a much stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. One of our NLF members is married to a wonderful lady. Her father prayed with me when I was nine years old. One evening in church, I went out to the back for prayer. And he prayed with me. And while he prayed with me, I started speaking in tongues. And I didn't know what was happening. And I remember asking him, David, what is now he saw? And he said, don't stop speaking, don't stop speaking. It's the Holy Spirit that's filling you. Keep on speaking. But it had a huge impact in my life. In your own life, there's probably people that prayed with you, spent time with you, and, 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 and encourages us in difficult times. When I was in high school, you know, sometimes when you're in high school, you're going through struggles and things. But there was one teacher, wonderful Christian man, and he saw something in me that I didn't, we're not aware of. And he helped me and guided me. And, 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 and I developed a specific skill that I would not have been able to develop if it was not for the fact that he prayed with me and had an impact in my life. Many a times, someone phoned us just at the right moment. Just at the right moment. And pray for us over the phone. Or encourage us while we were going through difficult times. The influence of other pastors or fellow members of our church that had a big impact in our lives. It reminds me of a story that I read quite a while ago of a certain person that uh, was, he was a Christian clown. Uh, so he made himself up as a clown and he had a message for children specifically. One Saturday morning he woke up and the Holy Spirit spoke to him and says, put on your clown clothes, make up your face, put everything on, get in your car, I'll tell you where to go. And he got up and he made himself up and he put on, his, put on his clown clothes, got in his car. When he got in his car, the Lord told him, go to the beachfront and park there. And he went to the beachfront and he parked there. The moment he stopped, the Lord told him, get out of your car and start dancing on your rooftop of your car. He said, Lord, it's going to be some damage there because I'm not a small man. But he got out of the car, got on the car's roof and he started dancing. And it went on for about 10, 15 minutes, and many people laughed at him. But eventually he felt the spirit lift, and he got into his car, and he saw all the damage, but he went home. Two years later, he attends a conference, international conference. And at that conference, he was uh, just attending, and somebody went to the front and told the story. And he said, I sat one Saturday morning on the beachfront with my pistol in my hand, wanting to kill myself. And I said, Lord, if you are really there, let a clown dance on the top of his car roof. And he said, when I said those words, somebody started dancing, a clown, top of his car. And this person, this clown, sitting in the, in, the, in the audience, crying his eyes out. 
and said, Lord, through grace, just through grace, I could, I was, I was, I, I could do it. It can happen that God asks you to do something completely out of your safe space. To reach out, but you can save somebody's life. Because we are Pentecostal people. We believe the Holy Spirit speaks to us. We believe the Holy Spirit sometimes anoints us to do something completely out of the ordinary so that something else can happen in somebody's life. Many people think they do not qualify to be an influencer. Some of us are not well spoken or are shy or lack self-confidence. Whatever it might be, but God qualify people that think they are not qualified to do it. I want to take you to the story of John 4. It's about a woman that nobody thought can have any impact or any influence. She was an outsider, someone that was looked down upon. And Jesus took his disciples on a detour to go to Samaria. And then in Samaria, uh, it is not a good place because the Jews and the Samar Samaritans didn't speak to each other. They were enemies. They didn't like each other at all. Um, and Jesus go to the well in the heat of the day. And he sent his disciples to go and buy food. And he's alone at the well. And a certain lady with a bad reputation come to get water. And Jesus asked her for water. And this is how the situation unfolds in verse 9. It says, the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Because it was not something... That we did. For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, I, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She makes a comment. Jesus doesn't have something to draw water with. And, 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 she, uh, and she, she sees he's got nothing. Where will he get the living water from? And in verse 16, Jesus asked her to go and call her husband. And she replies that she did not have a husband. And Jesus replies in verse 18 and says, The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. This lady is known as an immoral person in that specific area. She tried to avoid people by coming to the well during the heat of the day, not in the times when all the others come to fetch some water. But the moment when Jesus offered to give her living water, her life changed. Something happens. Jesus sees her, speak to her, impact her life. I think she realized that she heard maybe about Jesus somewhere, that he could heal people and do miracles. If someone that, like that, if, uh, if you touch his garment, something will happen and you will be healed. And when the disciples arrive back there with Jesus... They find him interacting with this immoral woman. But they stay quiet, but realize something great was happening here. He was a lady that everyone around her despised and spoke negative about. Nobody wants to be associated with her, but Jesus, he's somebody that is worthy of the living water. She's worthy to have great influence. Verse 28 says, Then leaving a water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Some of the translations say that the people streamed out of the town to come to listen to Jesus. A person that is not in good standing with anybody there suddenly have influence, have an impact bringing people to Jesus. I don't know what your situation is, but maybe this, you are sitting here and say, I'm not good enough. My past is terrible. I don't want to speak about it. I tell you something tonight. God has forgiven that. It's under the blood of Jesus Christ. And don't let anybody remind you about that because the devil sometimes want to remind us about our bad past, but that we can remind him that we are now children of God and that we can have an impact that people can stream to Jesus Christ through our interactions, through the things that we do and things that we say. Jesus didn't use the latest influencer to make a difference. He used this lady and the whole town come to faith. God can open a door. Somebody that just comes to the kingdom and, and it has a huge, have a huge impact on the people around us. Me and you, 
us sitting here have influence. We are a light that's shining, that can shine brightly wherever we are. You know, I believe we are sometimes too, we are hiding there under the, the basket. The lamp is there, but we are hiding. We are, we are quiet when the moments arise where we are able to say something, where we can have an impact. There at work, where you are, there's maybe somebody that is, you can see, it's down and out. This person is struggling. Maybe just use the moment and say, may I pray for you? May I just give you a word of encouragement? Pray the Lord that he will give you a word of revelation to somebody in their life. When was the last time you listened to somebody's story? Each one of us sitting in this church has got a story, a unique story. They differ from person to person. But to just sit and be a good listener. Uh, one of the things that I heard last year when we had the WCC World Council of Churches, there was one morning when the Pentecostals, we had a chance to just say some things, but the lady, she was an Australian lady, had spoke on our behalf. But she said, one of the things that we as Pentecostals are not very well at, we don't listen. We want to speak. We want to dance. We want to sing. We want to be in the midst of things happening. But maybe God is calling me and you sometimes to just listen. Just hear when he speaks. And to listen to people speaking, allowing them to say words that we will say, can I pray with you on this matter? Can I be there for you during this difficult time? We don't have the answers. Many times I don't have the answers. But I know the one that's got the answer. His name is Jesus Christ. Maybe invite somebody to your small group or to your church. You know, it was because of people who invited my family many, 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 many moons ago to come to the AFM church there in Bethlehem. And they found the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for those people that took the trouble. Maybe you can also change a whole family's life. One of my governing body members, he was a bad man before he found Jesus Christ. He was a drunkard. He was a party animal. He's still a bit of a party animal, but now he's a Jesus party animal. But, you know, it was the, 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 the alcohol was flowing every weekend. And, he, you know, it was a... But there was one day when he was at the funeral and the Lord Jesus Christ touched his heart. And he changed around. His whole family has changed. His children. He's also got grandchildren now. But he's loving Jesus. And he's walking the way because he was at the place where he could hear the invitation and he could accept Jesus Christ. Maybe invite somebody that is lonely for lunch. Maybe at your house. Or go and have lunch for, with them. There's so many lonely people around. So many people that do not have anybody that care for them. Are we reaching out to care? Maybe WhatsApp a scripture to somebody with a message of encouragement just at the right moment in time. Give somebody something that they really need, a hug, maybe a kind word, or sometimes maybe just something in their hand that you really, really care. We live in a careless society. People don't care anymore. But we can be the difference. We can be the light on the lampstand that we can shine out and influence people's lives. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. May I ask you, if you will tonight with me ask the Lord, Lord, help me to be a bright shining light, to be a lamp on a lampstand, that, make, that have an impact, that influence people, that influence our country and where we live. Will you stand with me while we pray and commit ourselves to Jesus? Father God, I thank you that I'm part of a Pentecostal church. A church that believes that Jesus Christ is speaking to us. And is revealing himself to us. Lord, I thank you tonight that we have been able to hear your voice. On many occasions, some of us. Lord, if some of us have not heard your voice yet, I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will make us sensitize us to speak the words that you want to be spoken. 
Lord, as we are gathered tonight here at our national conference of our church, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, you've called this church, the Apostolic Faith Mission of South Africa, to, ha to have a huge impact in our country. You called us, Lord, to make a difference where we are, to be a lamp on a lampstand, to be an influencer, to have an impact. Lord, and as we are gathered here tonight, I pray, the Holy Spirit, that you will encourage us to once again think about this wonderful calling that you called us with, Lord, and that we go and fulfill that calling, that people will see the difference in us, and that the difference in us will change our country. Lord, as we are gathered here, I want to pray for our country. Lord, there's a lot of negative influences. There's a lot of negative things happening around us, and sometimes it even gets to us. Lord, I pray tonight that we will keep our, our minds pure, that our minds will be thinking on the things of the God. And let, Lord, that we will allow you to help us so that we have a positive influence in this country and that this country will see a new uh, 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 spirit arising, the Holy Spirit working in our hearts. Lord, I pray that your light will shine brightly. Your light will shine brightly out of us for wherever we go, whatever we do. Lord, tonight I also commit this conference in your hands. I pray, Lord, that we will go out here and then Saturday night and every day we are gathered here, Lord, different people, newly touched by the Holy Spirit to do the things that you've called us to do, Lord. I pray it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. May God bless you.